What's up you guys? My name is Thal Dennis and today we're going to be doing a video review of the First Player Steampunk Mechanical Keyboard. Now I really like this thing and I think it has a lot of good features. Um, I've got a lot of positive things to say about it but there are a few negative things. Uh, so let's get right into it. Alright, so the Steampunk comes in four different varieties. It comes with black switches, it comes with blue switches, it comes with brown switches, and it comes with white switches. Now, only one variation of these switches is replaceable, at least easily replaceable, by the average user, and that is the white switch, which I'm currently using. Now, all of these switches are first player's proprietary first G switch. Now, let's talk actuation force. The blacks require 60 grams, the browns require 55, the blues require 60, and the whites require 50. Now the polling rate on the keyboard is 1000 Hz, which is great for FPS gaming and any other fast paced use. The keyboard also has 104 key anti-ghosting and N key rollover, which is fantastic for anybody who plays RTS games or FPS games competitively. It's backlit with red LEDs that are built right into the PCB, they're not attached to the switches or anything like that. At least on the white switches they're not. Now the back plate for the keyboard is made of metal. Um, but the surround for it, like the outside frame, that's made of plastic. Um, it comes with a plastic wrist rest that attaches magnetically, and that is actually one of my complaints, but we'll get into that later. Now the cable is braided, it's red and black. It's about 71 inches long, just short of that, and at the end is a gold-plated USB connector. Now one of the things I really like about this keyboard is the double-shot keycaps. They're textured. Um, it feels wonderful. And, you know, during moments of, like, intense gameplay or anything like that, your fingers are not slipping off of them. Now, on top of that, uh, I really like the fact that the actuation force on the white switches is only 50 grams. Uh, my previous keyboard, which was made by this same company, it was the White Fire Rose, that had 55 grams of actuation force. Now, I didn't think that I would notice the difference in actuation force, but I absolutely do. These keys go down much easier and much faster. I'm an avid Overwatch fan. So this was a blessing. It wasn't a huge blessing, but it was certainly one that I welcome. Now real quick, I want to talk about the way it looks. It's red and black. There are red accents on the side of the keyboard, and then there is a red accent surrounding the LEDs that show whether or not your scroll lock, num lock, or caps lock buttons are activated. Just above the arrow keys is the logo. It says Steampunk First Player Mechanical Keyboard. Um, and on the bottom left hand corner of the wrist rest is the First Player logo. There are also media keys that you can access by holding down the function key and pressing the corresponding F key. F1 is going to open up whatever default media player you have selected in Windows. F2 is going to be your volume down. F3 is volume up. F4 is mute. F5 is stop. F6 allows you to select the previous track. F7 is play or pause. F8 is next track. F9 is your email, though it only opens my browser, so I suppose it only opens the default email client you have installed to Windows. Uh, F10 is home key, takes you to your home screen on your browser. F11 is your calculator, and then F12 is the search function. There are eight other function keys. Um, six of them deal with uh, backlight settings, and two of them deal with the brightness of your LEDs, but we'll talk about that later. For now, I want to talk about some complaints that I have with it. On the uh, previous keyboard that I had, there was no play in the switches at all. Once they were bottomed out, they wouldn't move to the left or right at all. But I noticed that the asterisk, the minus, and the plus key on my number pad kind of do wiggle when they're bottomed out. I don't know that that's a really serious problem, but it could develop into something serious. And on top of that, the wrist rest doesn't seem to attach properly. There are two little spots on the wrist rest that have magnets built into them, and they're supposed to connect with screws that are inside of these indentations on the body of the keyboard. Unfortunately, whether it be to design or poor manufacturing or something, um, they don't quite match up. The spots that the magnets are attached to don't fit into the indentations on the body of the keyboard. Now, for some of you, that may not be a big deal. To me, it isn't. I don't really use the wrist rest. But for others, that may be a problem. So keep that in mind if you're considering buying this keyboard. Now let's talk about LED effects. By pressing function and insert, home, page up, delete, end, or page down, you can access six different modes for the LED effects. The first mode, which is wave mode, is uh, function and insert. 
Now, as far as I can tell, you can't modify the behavior of this using the function key, but some other profiles you can. Now, function and the home key is a breathing effect. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Function and page up, which is mode three, is a ripple effect. So when you press a key, the LEDs ripple out from that. Mode four, which is function and delete, is a wave function. It, you can change the direction of that by pressing function and arrow key left or arrow key right. Function and end is mode five, and that's a personalized mode. So you have 10 different personalized LED settings where you can light up individual keys um, that you would use for specific games or applications, and you can leave the rest off. And finally, mode six, which is function and page down, is another reactive type effect. And what this does is whenever you press a key, it will light up and then slowly fade out. And any unused keys have no LED lighting at all. Now at this point in the video, I'd like to give you guys the opportunity of hearing this keyboard. I know some of you don't care about this, but some of you do. These are white switches, like I said. So they have the sound of the click and then the key bottoming out, the key topping out. They're a lot like blue switches, except the pitch is a little higher and they're a lot more mild in terms of volume. Now I wanna make it clear that in this clip, my W, A, S, and D keys have soft O-rings on the key stems, and so they don't make as much noise as any of the other keys on the keyboard. You'll notice that. Now in conclusion, I think this is a great keyboard. I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, there are a few problems, but at the price point, $54, I think it compares favorably to other similarly priced keyboards. Um, I think it's gonna hold up for a while and I'm happy with my purchase. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of it. Uh, like and subscribe. My next review should be coming out pretty soon. I'm gonna be reviewing a monitor, but more details on that later. Thanks guys.